Hi everyone, um, my name is Miss Green and I'm Director of Music at Leo Academy Trust. Um, I'm here today to bring you some training which I hope you find useful. Um, and the training is designed for um, early years foundation stage and possibly some key stage one children. The reason I've decided to do this training today is because I feel that obviously music is so important and it should be introduced as early as possible in a child's life. So the sooner you can sort of incorporate it into the everyday running of your class, the better. Um, so what I've done, I've actually got a slide presentation for you. I'm not actually gonna go through that in detail because I know you can all read. Um, but what I'd rather spend my time on doing is actually giving you some ideas that you can use with your children in nursery or reception um, or key stage one to try and help, you know, their musical journey and their musical learning. Um, what I'm going to do, I'll um, share my slides with you now. So hopefully this is going to work. Okay, so, right, okay, so these are my slides. Obviously, um, it, the today's session was actually down as um, early years foundation stage singing games. Um, I've changed that slightly because I don't think it's fair just to say that singing will cover the whole curriculum, although a lot of it can be covered through singing. But other types of music you could bring into the classroom will make it even more interesting for the children you're teaching. So we're going to do a bit of both, but mainly it will be singing. Um, OK, let's go on to the next slide. OK, so we're starting off with early years. Um, I've just made some, some comments, really, about... Um, some general points that you ought to think about. Um, obviously, a music session is much more than just singing. Um, in general, a music session with sort of nursery age children or reception age children will be structured around lots of different activities, obviously because their attention span is quite short and you need to keep them engaged. So um, the method of um, basically breaking up a music lesson, roughly about 30 minutes, I'd say, no longer, into about five or six different sections is ideal. And I'll talk to you about the structure of that lesson a little bit later on in the session. But some of the activities obviously you can do will be playing, there'll be um, moving and dancing, listening to music, um, using their voices in different ways, and of course, singing. Um, now, what I've done, I've actually grouped these into the following categories. Investigating sounds, listening and responding, using the voice, using instruments, communicating and present, presenting, and creating and designing. All right. So um, we'll just have a look at each one of those in a little bit more detail. And I'll perhaps give you one or two activities for some of them that might help you to do this. So if we're investigating sounds, um, the first um, thing is for them to be able to respond to a, sing a signal. Now, um, obviously, you can use words like stop, start. That's fine. But um, in music, signals are incredibly important. Obviously, if you think of what a conductor does, they're signaling all the time. So I start usually by playing little games, a little bit like musical statues or something like that, where you might actually um, shake your maraca. Um, so I'm just going to exit so hopefully i'm hoping you can see me on the side of this now um so basically um i shake my maraca and the child has to respond so if the maraca stops the child has to freeze so they're using their listening skills and their bodies are having to react to to that signal so for example and then freeze and freeze again 
So they really, really enjoy that. Um, and you can try and trick them out by doing really sort of short, quick signals, which they find funny quite often. Um, other signals they could respond to, um, I haven't actually brought them with me today, which is a bit silly, but you can maybe get a green lollipop um, and a red lollipop. And you might play a piece of music in the background and they have to watch you with the lollipop. If you show green, they can move around. If you show red, they stop. So again, it's learning how to stop and start. Okay. Right. Now, I actually learnt a song. It was only a few days ago. And it was um, a song about playing and stopping. So I might teach that a little bit later on today. Um, but we'll just carry on for now. So the next thing is about feeling a musical phrase. Um, about showing sort of awareness of where the melody is in the song or the music. Now, the best way to do this, I think, is by getting them to actually move or um, use something like, I'm just trying to find it, like uh, a silk scarf um, that they can actually use to show how the melody of the music works. Now, what I'm going to do, because I need to stand up for this, so I'm just going to put my laptop up on the chair. Um, what you need to do is basically find different types of music um, that have that pick out different elements. So you might want a really fast piece of music where they can move their scarves really quickly. You might want a really slow piece of music where they're going to move their scarves really slowly and kind of smoothly. Um, there obviously you can use all genres of music. One that I've used in my, um, my recordings before is one by Brahms. So I'm just going to share that with you. So I'm going to stop presenting. Um, so we're going to do, and I have a listen to Brahms. Okay, so basically that is one way of getting the children to sort of feel where the music is going in terms of the phrasing, in terms of the speed, um, and it just helps them to really, really listen to a piece of music. Um, and obviously they find it a lot more interesting than just sitting on a carpet and, and listening. They need to move and they need to feel that music in their bodies. So that's a really good... Um, way of getting them to do that. Okay, right, I'm just going to go back to my slide. So I need to. Okay, so um, what I might do, because I want to actually take you sort of through a lesson to start with, I might actually skip the next few slides because this just really goes on to say about those areas that I mentioned before um, and gives you a few ideas of what you may do. But I want to skip actually to find the structure of a music lesson, which I think I've got on slide nine. Let's just check that out. Yeah, okay. So, um, 
I talked to you about breaking up um, an early year's music session into little chunks. Um, so it's, it's very interactive and it's got pace all the time. And the first thing that is obvious to do is a welcome song or a chant or something similar to that. And I've got a few welcome songs that I'm going to sing for you. You may have heard some of them before, you may not. So the first one goes like this. And what I tend to do is get the children, when we're not in lockdown, obviously, or when we're not actually confined to our desk, to follow me. And I form, get them to form a circle. So they sort of follow me around. And that way, they automatically go into a circle shape. So it goes, welcome everybody, it's time for us to sing. Welcome everybody, it's time for us to sing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, it's time for us to sing. And you go on and on and on with that as long as it takes to get the whole class sitting down. So that's the Welcome Everybody song. Um, you might want to, what you could do is stand still when you sing the numbers. So you're walking for the Welcome Everybody, it's time for us to sing. Welcome Everybody, it's time for us to sing. Then you stand still. One, two, so you're doing clap on number one and a knee tap on two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's time for us to sing. And off you go again. Welcome, everybody. And etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's a really good way of getting them to form a circle easily and just to get them singing and using a little bit of body percussion. Um Another song we can sing um, is obviously the hello song that you may have heard on some of my recordings. And this is a song where you can encourage solo singing, I think. Um, and it goes like this. Sing hello, hello. Sing hello, hello. Sing hello, hello. Sing hello, hello. Okay, so that is a song where you can encourage them to sing on their own. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen because I'm not sure how well you can see me. Um, you might have seen that I've got a maraca. I say that it's a magic maraca because it helps them to sing really beautifully. In other words, it just gives them the confidence to sing out um, and not be shy. Um, by the way, I never force a child to sing. If they don't want to sing, just, just let them be. That's fine. Just let them listen. Um, so, basically, when I do this, this is a really good way of getting them to know that you are singing. And then if you do that, it's their turn to sing. So it'll be, sing hello, hello. So actually their response in this song is different to yours. So you need to teach the song as a whole first, if that makes sense. So let's just try it. Maybe you could respond. Sing hello, hello. Sing hello, hello. Sing hello, hello. Sing hello, hello. Now what I want do we sing that all together as a group and we do that for quite a few lessons before I ask if anyone wants to um, sing a solo and if anybody puts their hand up then what I do is sing hello point the microphone at them and then the next one sing hello to the next child who wants to sing on their own sing hello sing hello hello so there's four children there that you can target to see if they can sing a solo on their own. And if you repeat it, say, three or four times, you can pretty much get half the class singing a solo, of course, if they want to. So that was another um, Hello song for you. Um, there's another song that basically is the How Do You Do song. It goes, how do you do? 
How do you do? I'm very pleased to meet you. I'm very pleased to meet you. What is your name? Um, again, we could do this round the circle if you stand in the middle of the circle. And this is a good way at the beginning of a year to get to learn the children's names. So I would basically sing how, or everyone, once you know the song, you sing, how do you do? How do you do? I'm very pleased to meet you. I'm very pleased to meet you. What is your name? And then if the person puts their hand up because they want to sing a solo, they sing, my name is Miss Green. Now they might sing it, they might say it, they might squeak it. <laughs> it doesn't really matter, just let them just respond if they want to on their own. Um, and eventually they will get used to that and you'll get more and more children joining in. So it's, what is your name? My name is Tommy, or whatever it might be. Um, now, um, a chant that I use a lot in Key Stage 1 is um, this one, which again are on my recording, so you may have heard this before, but it goes, hello to you, and the children have to respond or copy everything you say. Now, to introduce this game, what I do, I get the children, I ask them, basically, are they any good at copying? And they all go, yes, we are. So I say, okay, let's see if you can copy this. So we do this. Na, 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 na. And then they copy it. Na, 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 na. Which they all think is highly funny and laugh and giggle. But the whole point is that those two sounds are actually the first sounds that they will probably sing. It's that playground sort of chant that la, 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 la. Um, so they feel very secure with those two actual pitches. It doesn't really matter where you pitch it, but just so they've got that interval. La, 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 la. It's a so me, so me. I'll talk to you a bit about that in a minute. But um, yeah, so basically that is um, what I do to get them warmed up, ready for this, if you want to. And that's a good way of getting them warmed up for singing and having the courage to sing. And then they copy this, which is using their speaking voice. So we go, hello to you. And they go, hello to you. Then move your shoulders, one, two. Move your shoulders, one, two. Now stamp your feet. Now stamp your feet. And clap on the beat and clap on the beat. Hands stretch up high, and they go, hands stretch up high. Wrinkle fingers near the sky, wrinkle fingers near the sky. Give a smile, give a grin, give a smile, give a grin. And then this is where we turn around. Turn around and spin, turn around and spin. Well done, everyone, well done, everyone. Our music's begun, our music's begun. And that's a really nice chant. Um, to begin with, I'm always the leader. But when children get a little bit older, perhaps um, towards the end of year one and in year two, you can actually choose them to be the leaders um, once, they well it, once they know it well enough. So they can actually be the teacher taking the lead and leading that whole chant, which, which they love doing. Okay, I'm just seeing if I've got any other sort of welcome songs that I can teach you. Um, the other one, very simple one, basically goes like this. It goes, hello, how are you? And they sing, very well, thank you. Again, you'll notice it's using those two sort of pitches, that playground voice which makes them feel really secure at the beginning of a singing session. So let's just try that. Hello, how are you? Very well, thank you. Now again, they can respond as a whole class or when they become a little bit more confident, they can respond as individuals. So they can sing a solo or maybe even as groups. 
All right. OK, I'm going to move on from there because I think that's enough. Um, hello songs and um, chants for you to be going on with. Um, now, um, I'm just going to take you back to my slides. All right, so we've looked at some um, welcome songs or hello songs. Um, and then the second part of the lesson is often made up of familiar songs. Now, um, what I've put a little bit later on, which actually I'm perhaps going to share with you now, are some top tips, because this comes down to what I mean by familiar songs. I'm just trying to find them. I think they're on, let me have a look at my notes. They're on slide 10, hopefully, are they? No. Here we are, they're on slide 15. So, um, basically, my sort of top tips, if you like, for singing um, is basically that you don't need any instruments. So if you're in a school that hasn't got many instruments or your classroom doesn't have many to hand, or maybe, other classes are using those instruments when your music session is, um, you don't need them. Um, so there's no expensive instruments, no expense, you just need to have a bit of enthusiasm and have a go. The other reason singing is so important, and I'm going to come to this in a minute, um, is because um, it allows the children to hear their voices and to really listen. And it's really, really good for the children to sing just on their own, unaccompanied. Now, lots of people think they need to be able to play the piano or play the guitar or another kind of instrument to take music. And that's that's not true. In fact, probably for younger children, it's better if they actually sing on their own, unaccompanied. Because if you have loud, noisy backing tracks or you have, you know, somebody quite loud on the piano playing, it doesn't allow them to listen to the sounds they're actually producing. And also, if you're trying to model the singing and all they can hear is a backing track in the background, um, it doesn't really work as well. So if you are, I'm not saying don't use backing tracks because I do, but um, just be careful with them. Don't put them up too loud and, and, and choose them carefully, basically. Um, the other thing is, when you're setting the room up for singing, I like ideally to be sat in a circle. Obviously, at the moment, that's not necessarily possible because we all have to be spaced out. But when things hopefully go back to normal, um, sit your children in a circle so there's as much eye contact and communication between you and them as possible, and of course, each other. Um, it also means that you can have instruments and things that you need for that lesson in the middle of the circle. Um, now, this is the bit I was getting to that linked with the other slide. It says, choose songs that you know really well and so that you can model to the children. And obviously, the second part of the structure that I've just been to, that I've just talked to you about, was to um, use familiar songs, something well known. Now, obviously, you will have your own songs that you're familiar with. But, you know, the obvious ones are nursery rhymes. And don't underestimate nursery rhymes. They're really, really good for children to sing. Um, so things like The Wheels on the Bus, Old MacDonald Had a Farm. Um, gosh, I can't think of any now. Um, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Um, five Little Ducks Went Swimming One Day. Um, one of my favourites, I Am the Music Man. All those sort of children's songs, whichever ones you're familiar with, Use those to start with, because if you're not very confident, then obviously songs that you really, really know, well, know really well and you really enjoy, you're going to model better to the children. And they will get, they'll share your enthusiasm and then they'll, they'll get a little bit more from it. So that's what I'd advise to choose really well-known songs. Now, what I want to do is go back to the slide I've just shown you. I think if I'm remembering correctly, it was slide nine. Yeah, um, basically, so familiar songs with physical actions. So things like the wheels on the bus go round and round. It's great because it gets the kids moving. 
Now, what I'd like to do today is teach you a few more songs that perhaps aren't so familiar to you um, and fit in really well with this sort of early years foundation stage and lower key stage one lesson structure for music. Um, a lot of them sort of are based on a method of from Kadai, which I'm not really going to go into, but um, they're very simple songs and they're really, really good for um, basically developing a child's musicality. And it helps in lots of other areas of, of learning and music as well. So um, you may have heard some of the songs that I've sung. I'm just going to sit down because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. OK. Um, basically, I might actually come out of this because I think it's easier if I stop presenting so you can actually see what I'm doing. Um, right, so some of the less familiar songs to you um, might be some of the Kadai songs, which use very, very simple um, melodies with quite often some very simple words. Um, but what they do, they, they emphasize a lot of the um, relate, interrelated dimensions of music, like pitch, like tempo, like pulse and rhythm. Um, probably the, the most important one of those in early years is get, getting them feeling the beat or the pulse. So there are a few different songs that you may or may not know that can do that. Um, one of the ones I love and the children actually love is one called Cobbler, Cobbler, Mend My Shoe. And Cobbler, Cobbler, Mend My Shoe is obviously about a cobbler who fixes shoes, but it just uses that playground. You know the playground voice again with the two pitches. So it goes, cobbler, cobbler, mend my shoe, get it done by half past two. Half past two is much too late, get it done by half past eight. So very, very simple song. Um, those of you who know anything about Kadai will know that we sometimes use the sulfur hand system or signs to help the children see where the pitch is going. Um, so with this one, you can actually do that. And it's actually um, starts on a so and then it's a me. You might know those from um, the sound of music, do a deer. So do re me fa so okay that's all we need to know at the moment so that's do re me fa so okay so it's just going up the scale one by one and this actual song is on a so and a me and i will say to them pull a funny face in the mirror and then lay the tablecloth on the table. Put a funny face in the mirror, lay the tablecloth on the table. And we sing that song, once it's familiar, with that in as well. Cobbler, cobbler, mend my shoe, get it done by half past two. Half past two is much too late, get it done by half past eight. And once you've done that, you can actually get them feeling the beat of that song. So what I do is I give them a clave or um, sometimes they use their hands as hammers and they actually tap their shoes. So, and they can tap their shoes to the beat. So it's ready, go. Cobbler, cobbler, mend my shoe, get it done by half past two, etc., etc. Um, and that helps them to feel the beat. And then we feel the beat with the other shoe as well. Um, I have done it, if you're brave enough, um, I have done it where children actually take off their shoe and they actually tap their shoe on the ground. Um, they quite like that, but it you know, it's up to you whether you want to do that or not. But it, it's nice because they're actually feeling that beat actually in their shoe. 
Once you've done that, I then get them to stand up and feel it in their feet. So, cobbler, cobbler, mend my shoe. But we just stay on the spot. Um, because to begin with, when they're quite young, moving around and feeling the beat, they don't find very easy. So it's better for them to stay on the spot and do it. And they find that a little bit easier. I think in year one, you can definitely start to move around. So you could, in year one, what's really nice is to actually change direction at the end of every phrase. So you might go, cobbler, cobbler, mend my shoe, then change direction. Get it done by half past two. Change direction. Half past two is much too late. And then for the last phrase, get it done by half past eight. Okay, so that's a few things you can do with that song. Um, the other thing that is really, really good is for children to start to find, well, to, to internalize the beat. And the way we do this is by taking the words out and putting them into our heads. So what I mean by that is, for example, and you can do this with any song. Um, I'm using this as an example, Cobbler Cobbler, um, but you could do it with Old MacDonald, you can do it with Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Um, but basically what you do, once they know the song well enough, you are going to give them two signs. So again, they're responding to signals. This means they put their voices into their head. So they're using their singing voice in their head. And this means they can sing out loud. Okay, so this is out loud. This is singing in their head. So for example, cobbler, sorry, cobbler, cobbler, mend my shoe. Half past two is much too late. So not only they're internalizing the beat here, they're actually having to kind of think about phrasing as well. Like we've just done, we've done a change of direction for the end of the phrases. It's helping them to think of that. And you can break it up into smaller chunks. So to make it more difficult, you can go, cobbler, cobbler. Get it done by. And rather than keeping it regular, when they get really good in year one, probably end of reception, end of, well, reception, end of reception, they still like doing this in year one, you can try and trick them. So you go, cobbler, cobbler, mend my. Two, half past two is. Get it done by half past. And they really like that. I mean, obviously, the older the child gets, I have done this within year one and year two. They still enjoy these songs, but they can become the leaders. They can become the teacher doing this and that. So leading the class in what to do. So that's a really good idea. Like I said, I'm not, not going to do that with every single song, but you can do it, like I say, with Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. So the same sort of method applies, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, so that is finding the pulse. Um, the other thing I like to do um, these are singing games, but this is sort of coming on to, I'm just gonna put it down now. I like to do singing games that involve um, like either uh, some sort of object. Um, and, you know, that song there was all about finding the beat, finding the pulse, internalizing the beat. And these songs are all about finding the pulse as well. And I find if a child's actually physically got something to find the beat with, they will find it easier than just trying to do it with their feet or nod with their head. Um, so I like teddy bears, so do most children. So there's a song called, um, I'm just trying to find it, Bounce the Teddy, It's Fun to Do. 
So what you have to do um, is they, I doubt they have, you have enough teddies for them each, but um, you can obviously just have two or three teddies and you can just pass them around the circle. Um, or you could choose certain children one week and choose other children the next week, so they all get a turn. But basically this song goes, bounce the teddy, it's fun to do. Then it's time for someone new. My turn, your turn, we can share. My turn, your turn, then it's fair. Bounce the teddy, it's fun to do. Then it's time for someone new. So as you can see, that's a song to the tune of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Um, but it's actually, we've changed the words to be about a teddy. And the child has to physically bounce the teddy on their lap in time with the beat. Okay, some will find it easier than others, but they really enjoy that. Once you've done it with a teddy and you want to in introduce some instruments, you can um, introduce sim simple um, handheld percussion instruments. Um, I think the best two instruments for early years, foundation stage, are either claves, which are basically these wooden sticks, or if you haven't got those, by the way, you can use chopsticks. They work equally as well and very cheap to get. Um, or what I call a shaky egg. The reason being, they're very easy for them to hold because they've got quite small hands. So this is manageable. Rather than give them a big drum, they you know they really struggle to start with. So. Um, on claves, for example, you might change the words. You might go, tap the claves, it's fun to do. Then it's time for someone new. My turn, your turn, we can share. My turn, your turn, then it's fair. Tap the claves, it's fun to do. Then it's time for someone new. And then obviously you can choose somebody else. Um, you could use lollipops to perhaps choose names so it's fair, um, or just keep a record of children who have had a turn and not. Um, it's quite important that they learn to take turns because quite often you won't have enough instruments for everybody in the class to play at one time. Um, you know, when I order instruments, the most sort of time bar sets I'll get are 15. So half the class have to sort of do something else while the other class are on the on the chime bars. So it's really good skill for them to learn to take turns and, and be patient. Um, now, um, when you feel a bit more confident, you can add bigger instruments. Oh, by the way, if you're going to do that with a shaky egg, I think the best thing with a shaky egg, rather than to do that, because they'll just do that like a rattle, it's just tap it into their hand. Bounce the shaker, it's fun to do. Or bounce the egg, it's whatever. You can make up the words as you want. When they get a little bit more confident, then you can introduce larger instruments. Um, I think it's quite important that children learn to hold the instruments correctly right from the start. Claves, it's hard for them in reception, but ideally you want them to hold it like this. Sorry, hold on. Because it makes a much better sound than that. But I understand probably until reception, they're gonna not be able to do that. They'll find it very hard, but you can at least show them the correct way, but say you don't mind if they play it like that. All right. With a drum, a drum is held in their non-dominant hand and they use their writing hand to tap the drum. And always encourage them to play it, you know, sensibly, not to really bang it because that might damage it, might hurt our ears. Um, so give them a drum once, you know, you think they're confident enough to do this. So you could play, bang the drum, it's fun to do. Then it's time for someone new, etc. etc. Um, so those are just a few ideas with that song. Um, I'm just 
trying to find a song that I wanted also to teach you. Um, yeah, it goes. Clap, clap, clap your hands, clap your hands together. Clap, clap, clap your hands, clap your hands together. Now, like I said at the beginning of um, the uh, session, it's quite often difficult to get the children to form a circle. So this is another one where sometimes I lead the line of children. This can be used in year one, actually, um, into a circle. And we just try out. We keep singing the song until we're all there and all in a circle. Um, and we use different body percussion. Now, by body percussion, I mean sounds our bodies make. So we clap to the beat. We stamp to the beat. We click to the beat. So we tap, tap, tap our chest, tap our chest together. Or tap, tap, tap our knees, tap our knees together. Tap, tap, tap our hands, tap our hands together. And actually they're walking as well in time with the beat whilst doing those actions. So that's quite tricky. So that is definitely sort of a year one skill, I think, to get that really, really good. Um, but that's another one where we've got the pulse, um, which is quite important. Um, just trying to find a song that I found that I thought might be good as well. Um, yeah, um, this is a little game um, where you put some instruments in a bag, so maybe a pea bag or something like that, and um, you sing it to the tune of Looby Loo. Here we go, Looby Loo. It goes, musical bag goes round, musical bag goes round, musical bag goes round, what are we playing today? So what you can do is you can put some really small handheld percussion instruments in that drawstring bag and you can get the children to pass the bag around in time with the music. So it's musical bag goes round, musical bag goes round and round the circle. Again, not very, very young children will be able to do this, but I think probably reception. Definitely, one, one will enjoy it. And it's a way of exploring different instruments, the timbres of different instruments. So you could put claves, shaky eggs. You might have some small um, maracas. You may have some very small handheld drums. You might have, um, I've seen some in nurseries and things, small tambourines. But even that, really, you can fit into a drawstring bag. So it's a good way of introducing them to different instruments. Okay, right. I'm just going to go back to my slides now. Okay, so, all right. So those were, that was sort of some things about familiar songs. Um, like I say, each one of these sections is about five minutes long, if that. So, you know, don't need to take as long as, as I've explained. So um, next one, poem or um, a spoken story or some sort of um, chant. Um, something like one potato, two potato, three potato, four, five potato, six potato, seven potato, more. Um, those are really, really good. Again, it's just getting them to move with the beat and speak using, you know, speak rather than sing. It's really important they use different voices. Um, there is a song actually that I use. Have you got your singing voice? Yes, we have. Yes, we have. It's a call and response. And then I go, have you got your big loud voice? Yes, we have. Yes, we have. Have you got your quiet voice? Yes, we have. Yes, we have. Okay, so you can introduce different um, timbres of voice, different types of voice um, with that song. 
Um, getting back to the um, spoken stories or chants, though, another one I quite like, again, because it makes them feel the beat, is the chip, chop, chippity chop. Cut off the bottom and cut off the top. What we've got left, we put back in the pot. Chip, chop, chippity chop. Okay, so that's um, another rhyme. There are lots and lots and lots. Um, and in fact, if you go to Charanga, which is a free music scheme, actually, for Sutton, for teachers in Sutton, um, you will need a login. So if you want to access this, you need to um, contact me so I can try and get a login for you. Um, but if you go to their scheme, um, under the singing section, you can see something called music tracks. And all of these games and a lot of the Kadai songs, like the um, Cobbler Cobbler Mend My Shoe, you might have heard me sing, Mary Ann, Mary Ann, make me porridge in a pan. Those are all in that pack. And you can print those off if you want to, or they're just there for you to use. Okay. Now, moving to music, I've kind of covered that a little bit already, haven't I, with the scarves. I think small silk scarves are a really good thing to invest in um, because it helps the children to move and think about the phrasing of the music and actually where what the music is doing, whether it speeds up or whether it's slow. Um, okay, now... Instrumental time. Um, I think I've kind of covered this with some of the games I've given you. Um, it's where you start to get instruments out. I would be very reluctant to get more than perhaps claves and small shaky eggs and small held held drums out with nursery. Um, I don't think they need any more than that. So um, that's the instrumental time. Listening time, I think it's really nice if you can get them to lie down for this. So quite often I get them to have their silk scarf and lie on their silk scarf and they can just close their eyes and listen to the music that you play them. Because we're coming to the end of the session, um, it's quite nice if you play some, some sort of calming music. Um, it can be recorded. If you play an instrument yourself, you might like to um, play something for them. They always like to hear you play. So I might play something like this. So they, they actually just lie down or sit very still, possibly their eyes closed and listen to that. And then farewell, we obviously sing um, a song like goodbye. And you can use some of the hello songs in the same way that um, we sing goodbye. So you might uh, go, Sorry, just someone's come in. <laughs> um, so you might sing, sing goodbye, goodbye, sing goodbye, goodbye, sing goodbye, goodbye, sing goodbye, goodbye. You might sing this. It's time to sing goodbye. It's time to sing goodbye. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. It's time to sing goodbye. They're all really nice ways of singing goodbye. Okay, so um, that basically um, gives you a few ideas um, what, what, what to do in a early years music lesson, and also probably some ideas how to develop those into a key stage one um, lesson. Um, the one thing I did just want to share with you very quickly, I'll leave you to read through the slides if you want to. Um, there's some, you know, 
things about singing there, the importance of um, playing singing games and teaching rhymes. Um, but what I'd like to do is just to show you some cards that I think the children really love um, and that you can make really easily. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen. And I want to show you these. You may have seen me use these in some of my online lessons. They're basically um, cards with graphic notation. And notation is something that, you know, eventually we should be teaching children. Um, and this gives them a really, really easy way in. Um, and I start this with nursery children and they love it. And quite often by well, definitely by reception, you can get them reading rhythms like this, okay, if not before, if they start at nursery level. So I have basically some cards with footprints on, and I say there are two cards, one that looks like that, one that looks like that. These are mummy bear's footprints, and these are baby bear's footprints, and we sing a song called Music Band. And it goes. Come with me to. Oh, by the way, if when you can move around the classroom or you're in a hall, which obviously is difficult given the current climate. But what I used to do, I hide the teddy somewhere. So if we're in the hall and there was sort of like, I don't know, a cupboard, I'd hide him on top of the cupboard. Or if there was some chairs stacked up at the one end of the hall, I put him on the um, or um, on, the, on the chairs so it just makes it a bit more fun for them but we go come with me to music land and we walk doing this music land music land come with me to music land let's see who we find there and I say can you see anyone can you see anyone and behind me might be mummy bear and you bring mummy bear down the first time and you say, mummy bear, you just say, this is mummy bear. And mummy bear, she walks like this, ta, 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 ta. And then you get them to walk like this, so they stand up. Mummy bear, she walks like this, ta, 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 ta. Okay. I don't introduce the cards at this point. Um, for quite a long time, I would just introduce Mummy Bear and get them to actually feel that ta, ta, ta in their feet, either by doing it on the spot or by moving around in a sort of circle format. When they can remember who Mummy Bear is, you can introduce <clears throat> Baby Bear. Now, baby bear, because she's got, well, he's got smaller feet, slightly faster. So it goes, baby, baby bear, he walks like this. T, 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 T. But again, it's very rhythmic because it's got to fit with the beat. So mummy bear is ta, 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 ta. And baby bear is T, 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 T. So get the children to try and go on tiptoe for that, like Baby Bear. Um, okay, once they can remember Mummy and Baby Bear, um, I think you can start introducing cards. Now, what you might want to do is just make some of these separately, but bigger, and put them in the middle of the circle. Um, or you can put them this way. Um, I find these quite good because you can flip them over later on when they get a little bit more confident. So um, once you, well, they know who Mummy Bear and Baby Bear are, you can introduce them to these the graphic notation. So you think, who do you think these footprints can be? So they say Mummy Bear. Um, and then we actually clap each time we see a footprint. So, mummy bear, she sounds like this. Mummy bear, she sounds like this. Ta, 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 ta. And they can clap while they sing. Ta, 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 ta. 
Baby Bear uses cards like this. So Baby Bear is T, 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 T. So there's two Baby Bear steps to one of Mummy's. So Baby Bear, he sounds like this. T, 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 T. Baby Bear, he sounds like this. T, 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 T. Okay. Um, then you can make some cards where we mix mummy bear and baby bear up. So, for example, it'd be mummy and baby bear sound like this. Ta, ti, ti, ta, ti, ti. Now they can clap it. They can finger tap it. Eventually, you can get them to play those rhythms on instruments. Um, there's all sorts of things you can do with these cards. Um, before you even start adding any proper staff notation. Um, staff notation is obviously the notes that um, it are written on a stave that, you know, musicians used. Um, so we can start by introducing ta, 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 ta. Now, you may know that this is called a crotchet, okay, in music. So, but we're going to call them tars. And as you can see, I've put them on the back of here. So when the children are familiar with this, while they're singing ta, 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 flip it over. And subconsciously, they will realize that that is ta, 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 ta. They'll realize that that is a one beat note. One, two three, four, and then you can introduce these, which are called quavers. Um, these are sort of half a beat each. So you basically just flip it over without them knowing. Don't say anything, just do it. So T, 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 T. And eventually the children will know exactly what rhythm that is, what rhythm that is. And then when you get to mix mummy bear and baby bear's footprints up, they get to know that as well. Um, and I was doing this um, with some reception children the other day and they were able to clap that um, quite easily. So um, that's a start, obviously. There's more that you can do with these cards. You can introduce rests, a sh, which would look like that in music. Um, but probably that's enough to be going on with to start with. Um, as the children get older, you can then introduce other note values like the minim um, and semi quavers. So um, those are very useful to make and will probably help you with that music land game. Right, um, I am just going to present my screen again now. I just want to make sure I've covered most of the things I want to. Um, obviously, you can um, get in touch with me if you want to, and I can give you uh, these slides. I can also um, give you some ideas for resources and where you can find those. Like I think I mentioned Charanga before. Um, so here it is. This is what Charanga looks like. Uh, I'm actually, I'm actually going to do an inset on using Charanga um, a little bit later on in the year. So um, if you want to know how to use that a little bit more effectively, then please do. And Charanga is really good for non-specialists. It gives you a bank of ideas and songs that are really, really easy to use. Uh, okay. Now, what I thought we'd do to finish is I found this lovely little song yesterday. So I'm just going to stop presenting again. It's actually a song from New Zealand uh, it's a body percussion song and it's really lovely because the children can add body percussion on their um, bodies. It gives you three different difficulties. So you could use it in sort of year one, year two. It might be OK, actually, the body percussion for even year three. But it's a really lovely song. Um, so I thought I'd just share this with you. OK. 
Okay, here we go. This is on from YouTube, actually, so you can find it there. Epo Tai Tai. It's from New Zealand and it's a body percussion song from New Zealand. where the body percussion comes in. actually going to stop it there because it obviously coming to the end there but you can see I mean that's even you know that's junior level the that last pattern of body percussion but I just thought that was a really really sweet song um from the other side of the world so okay um that brings me to the end of this session um I hope some of the ideas have been useful like I say, if you need any more for clarification or any more ideas, then please feel free to contact me. Okay. Um, hope you've enjoyed it and it's been useful. Okay. Bye, everyone.